Hi, I'm Chris Sangster, and welcome back to the studio. Today, we're going to talk about tempo. So the way Logic Pro handles tempo can be quite confusing, and I get a lot of questions about it. And I think the problem is that there are just too many ways to find and adjust the tempo of an audio file in Logic Pro. There are the project tempo modes, flex time, flex and follow, vary speed, loops, the smart tempo editor, and probably more than I'm forgetting. The point is, it's confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Most of the tempo-based operations you will need to do are super simple if you know where to look. So let's keep it simple. Here are the four operations that I think are most necessary regarding tempo in Logic Pro. One, setting your project tempo. Two, setting your project tempo to match the tempo of an imported audio file. Three, changing the tempo of an imported audio file to match the project tempo. And four, finding out what tempo an audio file is at without changing anything. And all four are super simple. Let's dive in. To start, setting your project tempo is as easy as coming up to the LCD, clicking on the current tempo of your project, 120 BPM by default, and typing in any beats per minute value that you want. The project and the metronome will then play at this tempo and all MIDI and session player tracks will follow that tempo. But when starting a project from scratch, there's one other feature that I find super helpful. When starting a new project, instead of using the file new function, use file new from template instead. Then select the first option in the left column, new project. And here's the feature we're looking for tap tempo. You can click on this button with your mouse to determine the tempo that you're feeling for your new song. So for example, if you've been humming a tune in your head and you want to make that tune into a song, tap this button to the beat of the tune in your head and it will set the project tempo to that BPM. I like to do between four and eight taps to get a good average. You can also just type in your tempo here if you already know it beforehand. And of course, you can always adjust it later in the LCD if necessary. Do know that if you change your project tempo with audio regions already in your timeline, you will need to make sure that flex time is enabled on all of those audio tracks before changing the tempo. Otherwise, only the MIDI and session player regions will follow the tempo change, but not the audio regions. Next up, how to set your project tempo to the tempo of an imported audio file. Imagine you have an audio file that you want to use as a starting point, perhaps a guitar recording, but you don't know what tempo the guitar was recorded at. How do we ensure that we match our project tempo to the tempo of that file so we can produce a song around it? As with most things in Logic Pro, there are going to be several ways to do this. But by far the easiest is to just drag and drop the file into your timeline, right click on the region, navigate down to tempo, and then select apply region tempo to project tempo. Hit apply and Logic will automatically detect the tempo of the file and set the project tempo accordingly. And we can see this song that I've imported actually has a tempo change in the chorus and Logic has recreated that with this tempo map in the tempo global track. Sometimes you may have to make a small adjustment to the tempo that's detected. I find it occasionally finds more tempo changes than are necessary, especially if your file has a less than perfectly quantized drum performance. For example, this change to 72.1 here and to 71.9 here, I would just delete these and make all of these an even 72. Easy peasy, but let's go back to that pop-up menu and examine a little closer our options for refining this action. The first being if you want to align the downbeat of the audio file to the nearest downbeat of the project. With this selected, Logic will detect the first beat of your audio file and move it to start on the nearest bar line of your session. Generally, you want this on so that the bars and beats of your session are in line with the bars and beats of the audio file. The second is an option to maintain relative position of all other regions. 
And this only applies if you have other regions in your session, obviously. And when it's selected, it means that the other regions in your session will be moved to maintain their relative position against that region you're using to set the project tempo. You can see if I have this crash symbol here, right at bar three, before the action, and I choose to maintain relative position, it moves to be in the same spot relative to this full song file that it was before I changed the project tempo. And if I don't select this option, the region stays right at bar three. It depends on if you have lined the other regions in your session up with the grid or with the audio file as to whether or not you want this on. If your other regions are aligned with the grid, then leave it unselected. If your other regions have been lined up with the region, then select it. And if there are no other regions in your session, just ignore it. Before we finish the video, I want to tell you about something that I made to help you become a better mixer and producer. Something I hear a lot of people struggle with is learning how to EQ. And honestly, EQ is the single most important tool we have available to us for mixing. And the process of learning to EQ doesn't have to be very complicated. That's why I made your guide to EQ a six step PDF guide that lays out my exact process for knowing when to EQ, what type of EQ plugin to use, how to find the right frequency to EQ, and how to know how much to boost or cut that frequency. It's a really simple method and it's one that you can employ in your mixes and productions today to make them better. So hit the link in the description box below the like button and download your free copy of your guide to EQ right now. Moving on, let's look at the inverse of this action, applying the project tempo to an imported region. This is probably the most common use, especially if you're sampling. When you have an audio file you want to import to your session, but it's at a different tempo than the project, we use this function. Again, super simple, just drag and drop the file into your session, right click on the region, navigate down to tempo, and this time select apply project tempo to region and downbeat. This will automatically detect the tempo of the region, turn on flex time for the track, and use flex time to adjust the tempo of the region to match the tempo of the project. And it will align the region's downbeat to the nearest bar line. A few things to be aware of though. This function does use flex time to warp the audio. So if it's a big change, it may come with some artifacts or just an overall bad sound to the warped audio. Small deviations from the original tempo will always sound best. But you can open the flex time view and change the flex time algorithm on the track to see which one best fits your source material. If you're using this as a method of importing samples into your project, it's also worth knowing that you're most likely going to be chopping this up and moving these regions around to place it where you want. And for this, I find using tab to transient to slice the front of the region right to a beat can be very helpful for keeping the sample synced up wherever you move it. Find where in the region you want the sample to start and end, and then make a marquee selection that starts just before your desired end point and finishes just beyond your desired out point. Then hit the left arrow to set your out point right on a transient. And then hit shift plus the right arrow to set the beginning right on a transient. Then you can click inside the marquee selection to chop up your sample, and now you have a perfectly timed up region that you can move freely throughout your session. And just a quick note about the difference between normal audio regions and loops in Logic Pro. I've talked about this in depth before, but Logic Pro treats loop regions differently than normal audio regions. For starters, this delineation between an audio region and a loop audio region is made automatically, and there's nothing you can do to change that. 
Logic Pro always analyzes imported audio files and determines if they are a loop. If it determines an imported audio region is a loop, it will have this loop icon at the top of the region. And the big difference here is that loop regions are automatically adjusted to match the project tempo. You don't have to right click and choose the option. With loop regions, Logic turns on the flex and follow function in the region inspector. This is slightly different than the traditional flex time view, but the result is the same. The audio will be warped to be in time with the project tempo. One final simple action is finding out the tempo of an audio file without changing anything. You might want to do this to see if there's going to be too big of a deviation for flex time to sound good or just as a reference for another project. Whatever the reason, the process is simple. Just double click on an audio region and in the editor that comes up, click on the smart tempo tab. Then click analyze. Don't worry about the complicated layout of this window. All we're looking at is this mini LCD here and the tempo displayed there is the tempo of the audio file. There we go. Everything you need to know about Tempo and Logic Pro. I'm kidding, of course. There are many more advanced features about Tempo that are worth learning about, but I really believe that these four simple actions will cover the majority of your Tempo related needs in Logic Pro. But let me know in the comments below what other aspects of Tempo and Logic Pro are necessary for your workflow, or what other topics regarding Tempo would you like to learn more about? I'd be happy to answer any questions and possibly make more videos on some more advanced Tempo topics in the future. As always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you at the studio next time. Thanks.